Good morning and welcome to today's reflection for Monday the 26th of February. Prayer is difficult, don't you agree? It is said that John Wesley regularly got up at 4am and spent four hours in prayer, and that later in life he would pray for up to eight hours each day. Well, I have to tell you that I am well into my later life and I can't do it. Is our difficulty to do with focus and concentration for long periods? Is it to do with all the distractions that we have? Or is it to do with our lack of commitment to what is primary? Or is it a combination of all of the above and more? The current edition of Tier Times, the magazine from Tier Fund, includes an article by Pete Gregg in which he reflects on some findings from research carried out by Tier Fund among people who pray. 65% describe the prospect of praying about global poverty as overwhelming, and only 24% pray regularly about issues of poverty, injustice and the environmental crisis. In contrast, 71% pray for their own families, 40% for healing for friends. Pete Gregg continues, in other words, we are pretty fluent in prayer for our own felt needs, but it, when it comes to the greatest and most urgent needs of our time, then we struggle. He then goes on to propose that one key to making prayers about big global issues less overwhelming is to spend more time listening and less time speaking. Three things go wrong, he says, if we fail to listen. First, our prayers become transactional rather than relational. In other words, I talk at God instead of having a conversation with him. Second, I get exhausted because it's utterly impossible to keep up with all the world's needs and problems. And third, our prayers become our own personal agenda. God, this is what I want you to do and how. To misquote the great theologian Karl Barth, it is essential to pray with the Bible in one hand and the newspaper in the other. He was, in fact, talking about preaching, but I think it's equally true of prayer. <clears throat> now, obviously, Christian organisations and charities believe in the effectiveness of prayer and are naturally keen to provide us with lots of details and resources about their work to enable us to become more effective praying partners with them. But speaking for myself, the more details I am given, the more overwhelmed I feel. And God knows more detail than I ever could. So does it in fact matter if I forget the name of that lady in a village in Malawi whose family life has been transformed by tear fund support of her community? Is it not more conducive to meaningful prayer if I hold a picture of her in my mind and take time to imagine God's better future for her and those like her, without necessarily trying to compose words to express that. Nearly half a century ago, the American theologian Walter Brueggemann wrote a book called The Prophetic Imagination. It remains in print. It's a hard read, and I'm not very far through it yet. But the basic premise is that God's purposes find fulfilment through those who imagine and envision a different future, a counterculture to that which prevails at the time. He traces this thinking through Moses and the prophets to its culmination in Jesus of Nazareth. Could it be that our prayers of intercession have sometimes been reduced to a list of things that we want to God to do and unspoken frustration that often he doesn't seem to do them? Might we yet become imaginative prayers who believe that a future is possible which is different from that which seems to be inevitable? And might we dare to live in the light of what we pray? This is not about denying reality. Lament and longing will be central to our praying. But it is about embracing amazement and hope and remembering God. A phrase which recurs dozens of times in the pages of the Old Testament is the God who brought you out of Egypt. A phrase which reminds the Israelites that the God who acted for them then 
albeit after 400 years of waiting, will act again. Remember this, say the prophets, hold on to it and find hope. So let us pray. As then, so now, as the Israelite slaves found it impossible to imagine a different future, so often do we. Lord, teach us to pray imaginatively and prophetically to help bring about your future. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Amen. <laughs>